I'm Carlos Marcial. Some of you may already know me. Um, I've been a crypto artist for almost two years now. And like my first NFT was actually minted on the 19th of November of 2019. So it's going to be my two year anniversary. It's just around the corner. Uh, before that, um, I, I was like, um, I work as a, as a digital designer, as a, as a 3D designer um, in, in the motion graphics industry for like between six to eight years, like on and off, because I also did like a lot of other things just to like survive um, economically. Uh, but I but I've been in in the like the three I would say like the three D industry, three D motion graphics industry for around like eight years. Um, and then two years ago, I I, I discovered NFTs um, through Twitter. I, I ran into like Superverse Twitter account. And that's how I, I, I discovered them. Um, and before that, I used to work for a design company in Toronto, in, in Canada, that used to um, cater specifically uh, to blockchain companies. So I spent like almost a year there where like I would work only exclusively on blockchain projects and that's where i really connected with um with the blockchain space and the crypto space and nfts and i learned about like crypto kitties and and we would spend you know a lot of time talking about like what was going to happen with nfts um we we none of none of the people that that work there uh, could ever imagine that art would become so important in the nft space we we all thought that it was just going to be like collectibles and gaming, um, which obviously it's part of like the ecosystem, but I think none of us really imagine like, you know, art taking off through, through, through NFTs. Um, yeah, so, but that, that was kind of like, you know, how I got into like crypto and I think I put myself in kind of like the right position to, to when I saw what was gonna happen with like NFTs and crypto art, um, it was because I spent some time before that working with blockchain companies. And that's kind of like more or less my, my, my background. I, I was born in, in Mexico City from a half Mexican, half Puerto Rican mother and a Puerto Rican father. But I was raised in the island of, of Puerto Rico in, in the Caribbean. So I'm, you know, I'm a mix of both cultures. I'm Puerto Rican, but I'm also Mexican. Um, Ten years ago, I decided to to come to Mexico City, where I was actually born, because I really didn't know the city, even though my family brought me, you know, um, occasionally. But I, I decided that I really wanted to experience what Mexico City was about. Um, that was like 10 years ago. And, and I just stayed. Uh, and my wife is from here. My kids were born here. I'm still here, even though I, I, I have plans on eventually moving back to, to Puerto Rico in the Caribbean. But for now, I'm here in Mexico City, and that's kind of like more or less who I, who I am. So if anybody has questions or anything. Awesome, Carlos. Thank you so much. It's so great to, uh, to have you. Um, yeah, guys, feel free to unmute or if you want, uh, text and I can read it out. Come on, don't be shy. <laughs> hey, Carlos. Happy, happy to, to have you here. That's awesome to hear you again. And Carlos was the first person that talked about NFTs for me and for Koi, I guess. And it was last year in a project for a Brazilian in fashion company. And yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty yeah, happy. I yeah, I'm 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 pretty happy to to have you. I'm I'm trying to to think in some questions and yeah. Let, let me let me let me think. Take your time, Mikael. Take your time. Maybe something yeah, about being an, an artist in Latin America, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like do do did you have like other friends that were working with digital art in Latin America and I don't know 
they when they they discovered that you were doing NFTs, how they reacted to it? I don't know. I don't know if they got it, but no. I mean, I, that's a really good question because I think a, a lot of artists, you know, um, have been struggling with that, with the fact that you 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 discover NFTs, right? And 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 you you found a, an interesting place and, and an interesting community. To that 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 it's really interested and 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 it's willing to hear you out and 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 see what what you created, and obviously you want to share that with with the with with your friends with your with, with your artist friends. It doesn't matter if they're digital or if they're like physical. Um, if, if they do like physical artworks, like I totally get it. Like I totally get it. Like I've been through that. I've been, but but. <clears throat> Interestingly enough, in, in my case, I've had artists that were like around me that when they found out that I was in NFTs and that something was happening there and that I was like doing quite well, they reached out to me. Like I, I like at maybe at the beginning, I tried to reach out to a lot of people because I was like super excited about it and what was going on. And I saw that there was like a lot of potential. And I could imagine that a lot of my friends could benefit from it. But but I remember talking about it, you know, excitedly to some of them. And I and, and they didn't get it. Like they didn't they didn't um they didn't criticize me actually. I think they, they like it's basically because a lot of them were not informed, they didn't understood it, they didn't understand it. So so I didn't get kind of like harsh critiques or anything. It was just kind of like I'm like miss opportunities. Like I, I talked about NFTs to a couple of like really talented artist friends from Mexico and from Puerto Rico. Um, and unfortunately, like they didn't get it and they didn't jump aboard. And it's kind of like more like, oh, fuck, like they, they would have done so much. Like they would have been like, you know, really early, uh, but they didn't get it. They didn't get it. And, and now actually. Um, what I'm getting is like more people from the like friends from the traditional art world are just like you know they're struggling they're like like most artists yeah. do. they right they 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 need to find ways of of monetizing what they do if they want to keep on being artists full time at least right so so actually I got a, like a good friend here from Mexico that he's like he's a painter and 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 I would have thought like never in a million years that that this person would write to me wanting to know more about NFTs because they all they, they gave me the the impression that they were like super traditional right I don't know if you, <laughs> yeah right like ah, i'm not gonna touch that like nfts wow digital <laughs> social media you know i like to paint and that's it and but 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 i i i swear like that guy who i never thought would write to me wanting to know about nfts just wrote to me like this morning right so so, uh, so it's, awesome right like it's so it's kind of like ah, man, i wouldn't I, I wouldn't waste my my time and energy trying to convince somebody that is yeah. right like it's already interested like if somebody is interested and they Sorry, and they write to you, Ikaro. It's like, okay, you're interested. You want to know? Okay, I can help you. But kind of like being out there trying to convince people, like there's a there's a saying that uh, at least in Spanish, like you can take the horse to the river, but if the horse is not thirsty, it won't drink the water. Right. <laughs> that, that's a good phrase. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Si puedes llevar el caballo al río, pero si no tiene sed, no bebe el agua. If the horse <laughs> is not thirsty, it won't drink the water, right? So, so, so it's the same thing. Like I wish, like a lot of like my peers back when I start started minting NFTs would have like just at least you know taken like a little bit of time to learn about it. Uh, because I know that their lives would have changed just like mine did, but but it's 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 impossible. Like it's it's you know I cannot do it. I cannot change what like you know the past. Um, so so I wouldn't try to convince nobody about what we're doing here. Um, I think that you know for good or for worse, like a lot of, like every artist is gonna have to find their way around NFTs. 
you know it's either that or you even if you're like in the traditional painting world you, it's what giving the gallery 50 60 percent every time they sell you something if they sell something it's like ah, that's not gonna work man you're gonna like struggle un unless you become picasso but how how many painters become picasso or basquiat like you know at least nfts yeah. is giving you a chance a fighting chance of making some money off your art and creativity mm -hmm. yeah that's that like here i think thank you thank you so much for for the Thing, sir like here, here in brazil like p people that are from the traditional art market they are literally having a five years career to have a chance to sell a, a physical painting for like a hundred dollars and mm -hmm. it's it's so it's so crazy how how we can I don't know, like the, the first time that you said about NFTs, I was super fucking excited because it I, I really saw the potential of, of this whole space inside this thing. And yeah, like as you said, if 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 the horse is thirsty, they will they will drink the, the water. Right. And yeah, that that's something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you cannot convince them. I mean yeah. I I, I... There, there's even like sometimes you are your, your you are your worst enemy, right? Like we can be our own enemy, and I think that's happened to some artists. You know, like they they they've seen what's been going on. It's it's in front of them. I, it doesn't matter if you're doing digital art, if you're doing physical art, as long as you're selling like the digital version of that, um, it can be an NFT. So in the end, it's all digital art. Uh, but it doesn't matter if it starts physical, right? Like I, I think we're past that. Like it's like crypto art and NFTs is not only about digital art, you know. It's it's about yeah. um, the provenance being digital, the ownership being the digital, you know. Uh, but but you can you can do whatever you want to do. So so um so I I just hope like some of them come around and realize that they they. They have a better chance of monetizing, you know, and that's it. That's it. They're not gonna be happier. They're not gonna like if they're bold. Their hair is not gonna grow back, you know. <laughs> if they mm -hmm. uh, whatever, you know, this is not this is not like a miracle. This is not like a cure yeah. for everything. But it's at least at least in the at minimum, it is a fighting chance of getting the world interested in in your art. And it's giving you at least a fighting chance of monetizing your creativity at, at a global scale. Because I, I, yeah, I global scale. right at a global scale. Because I, I, I don't like you're saying like you go into like your city in Brazil, right, and try to yeah. sell some physical paintings, whatnot. Yeah. But what hap what the, happens the, if you want to like take that global? The the crazy part, yeah, that like. A lot of people that have money to buy art in Brazil are people that are watching on Bolsonaro. So yeah, they they literally don't. Right. So you have to sell to sell yeah, Bolsonaro's followers, it. and that yeah. sucks. And that sucks. <laughs> that sucks. Yeah, that exactly this the okay. thing. So yeah, like have have a lot of other other people exactly. in the global global audience that can mm -hmm. relate with my pieces more than people. In my country, so yeah, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. that's it. Like with with a lot of a lot of we we I don't know my English is so. No, it's good. It's good. Yeah. So yeah, like have have I, anyone I, there any other question? I don't know. That was a good question. Yeah. So I mean, I I I I think it's 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 all about that. Like you're not gonna find. The, the people that actually buy with your art necessarily in your in Brazil it's like it's it's so, it's similar to the experience I've had in Mexico with NFTs it's like you you get me better than than my neighbor would get me here in in Mexico right like like that, that's mm -hmm. the beauty but we, we've known this like since we we jump into the internet because you know we've we've been connected to the internet at least myself mm -hmm. for, for for like a long time um like you you knew already that the people that really get you and that are like your like 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 your twin souls they're not in brazil as harsh as that might sound they're not in brazil might yeah. not in mexico you know what i mean 
Like that's the whole idea of like the global community. Even now, like like even now that people don't like the word metaverse because of of Zuckerberg of Facebook, but but it's true. It's that like you're gonna find the people that really vibe with what you do, with your art, with who you represent, who you are as a person. They're not they're not in your community in Brazil. That makes sense. They're not. They're they're global. So so you have to put yourself out there at least. I, that's what I understand right now. Like, I'm not gonna find my collectors in Mexico or in Puerto Rico. That's not gonna happen. You know, the, there's not enough people in these two countries. Um, even though that I have two countries that I call home, you know, that's most than, than a lot of people. But but even in those two countries, I'm not gonna find enough people to buy with, with what I create. So I actually need a, a, a global audience. And I think all of us, At, the, at this point in, 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 in time and history, we need that to be able to be successful artists. I'm For sure. Yeah. Right? You are total, totally right. Totally right. Yes. I I was thinking on a question. Like, when when you, you, you started on Super Air, right? On, on NFT? Mm -hmm. Like, when, when you started, like, Which which was your first piece minted, and how how it feels for you like having having this being collected? I don't know if I ask it right, but mm -hmm. ah, I don't know. Felt, you got it. it, it <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I got it. I got it. It felt <laughs> fucking surreal. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. It's like, what the fuck is going on here? Why would somebody pay? I think it was like a hundred dollars back then. That yeah. was like my first sale. Um, I I was completely overwhelmed. Like I was completely, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't, I couldn't. It, it took me some time to process what was going on. And, and I was like, oh, wait, but the money's already in my MetaMask. I can see it. And I know that, it, you know, it, it has value. I can see also like the dollar value of it. And I couldn't believe it. And I couldn't believe that it had happened so quickly, like it settled and that was it. Like I, I, I think that was probably the thing that blew my mind the most because as a, as a digital designer, um, and, 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 and some of you might be able to relate with this. It's like, okay, you finished the project, but you might not be getting paid right away, right? It might take like yeah. a month for the payment to, to, to be processed. Maybe and two months. Maybe two months, maybe three months, maybe four months. <laughs> Right? It gets yeah, we we've, we've all been in that in that situation where like you know we've made the work, we've invested a lot of time and the money and the money is not it's not there. So if, you know, even even if it was like you know a hundred dollars, which was like a lot of money for me back then, it yeah. still is. It feels like wow, you're paying me a hundred dollars for a fucking JPEG for a gift. Like how come? How did this happen? How did we get here, <laughs> right? Um, so, so yeah, I think it was it was the fact that somebody was willing to pay for it. It was the fact that it settled immediately, so I I didn't have to deal with the human resource department. I didn't have to send emails asking where when I was gonna get paid. I think I I think those two things blew my mind, and I would add that what eventually made everything kind of like make sense in my mind and understand that I was in front sorry that I was in front of like a different animal like a different beast was when that beast resolved like three months later and I think it resolved for five hundred dollars something Gosh. like that okay and, and I got I, I got like fifty dollars you know of on, on in, in royalties and I was like wait what Like, like it sold for a hundred dollar. I got the money straight away, and now it resold, and I got like an extra fifty dollars for it. What is this? I need to sit down, and I was, I, I was working nine to five at at at, at uh, the yeah. studio. Okay, but it was like, okay, no, no, no. I need to stop. Like, I need to sit down and really read about this. Like, what is this? How how did we get here? So I started like, you know, informing myself and 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 just spending more time in in Twitter. <laughs> I'm spending more time in, in, in NFT land because I, I realized that there was something, I would say, revolutionary in it, right? Like there was something really new 
that I had not seen before. And even if it wasn't like massive amounts of money, I didn't care. This is really cool. Um, so that's what happened mentally when I saw that first work and when it eventually resolved a couple, a couple of months later. Yeah, that was beautiful when that happened. It changed my, 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 my life. It changed my mind <clears throat> and, and regarding how I, I see digital art because I finally saw people putting value, like real value, like real monetary value on digital art. And that obviously changed my, my outlook on, on digital art. Definitely. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ikara. Much love. Love you. I <laughs> love you. If there's any other uh, questions, feel free to unmute and ask or type as well. If I'm reading that. Mr. Ricci. I'm pretty sure Mr. Ricci has a question. Not, not, not all at the same time, please. <laughs> no, Mr. Richie is typing. Um, so I'll read out the question once he finished. Uh, okay. I think. If there's anybody else in the meantime who wants to unmute, feel free. Okay, okay. Uh, hello, Carlos. <laughs> hello. Hello, hello. So I want to ask you a question, but first I want to thank you for what you do to the, the Latin uh, collect, uh, community. You are like the face of the Latin America community, and I, I am very glad of the work you, you do for us. Oh, okay. So kind, Mano. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Where are you from? Uh, Brazil, São Paulo. Brazil, São Paulo. Brazil, Brazil. Brazil, Brazil. Brazil. Brazil in the house. Yeah, Brazil in the Brazil in the <laughs> casa. <laughs> Brazil. <laughs> Okay, cara. Okay, cara. <laughs> obrigado, gracias, oh, no, obrigado, gracias, obrigado, 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 você. Mm -hmm. uh, so I want to to uh, ask you a question, okay? I want to. I saw on your Twitter about uh, organization collaboration of Latin Americans with super hair. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Yeah, that's uh. So, uh totally. Mm -hmm. uh, I want you, you 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 can talk more about it, okay? And uh, add, I want to add the one question to this question is about how your background affect your work. You know, uh, your your background affect the your approach with the NFT community. This is my question. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Perfect. Really good question. Thank you. Uh, first, like uh, Metaphysica, uh, that's the name of like the, the Latin American crypto art gallery that I propose to like the super rare community and the, and the DAO. And obviously uh, that's going to be up for, for voting um, like in a couple of days, I think. I think it, the, 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 the voting opens in the 15th, if I'm not mistaken. Um, whoever has rare can, can go and vote. It doesn't matter. I have to like say this. It doesn't matter if you have one rare or if you have uh, a thousand rare, right? As long as you have some rare in your uh, MetaMask, MetaMask wallet, you can go and vote for Metaphysica. Um, so the whole idea is to like, you know, uh, have a voice in the first um, space race. That's what they're calling it. So they're, they, they're going to be like the super rare spaces. Uh, and the and, and the idea is like we have like a Latin American voice uh, in the first one, right? Like we 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 Latin Americans we don't lose time, right? Um, so we're we're trying to move in there <clears throat> and and get our space. Uh, and the idea is like uh, that would be the space for for everybody in in the NF, in the Latin American crypto art and NFT community to eventually organize like exhibitions and write about crypto art in Latin America. And, and, and give context to, to the art that we create. And I think this links to the other question that you asked me, like how the background affects what you create. And, and, and that's so like, you know, of course, like that, that's 100% that's true with, with, with any kind of like artist, um, right? And, and sometimes what is missing when we Latin American artists uh, tokenize art is like they, a, a lot of people in the, uh, in the globally don't 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 have the context. Don't have maybe like the right context to to um, to understand uh, our background, right? 
um, and and I think that that is of you know of utmost importance uh, to me, right? Like the background is really important. Like I I in my case, you know, I'm I'm I'm, I'm mixed. I'm I'm I'm, I'm a mulatto. I'm, I I know in Brazil you you get this term a lot. Like I'm. I'm a mix between a black and white, you know, like I'm a, 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 a Afro descendant, like I'm a Afro Mexican or Afro Puerto Rican, depending on where I am. So I'm a black guy, right? And that 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 obviously informs, uh, well, like the the, the 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 I think the 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 ah the tag now is like Afro Latino, for example, right? Like you hear a lot of people talking about Afro Latinos. So so obviously, you know, that that me that informs how I use colors. Like, for example, my last uh, NFT, my Salvador Cibermundi, you know, he's mulatto, you know, he has dreadlocks, he has rastas, you know, he's, he's not a white Jesus, he's a black Jesus, um, that kind of thing, you know? And, and, and uh, but, but, but what I think, and, 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 I, I, and I, I'm really glad both questions, is that for me, it's really important to have a gallery uh, inside super rare that I can curate and that I can help other artists that you know that have tried to be on super rare but you know super rare uh, don't have maybe in the case of like a lot of Latin American artists they, they don't have I would say the cognitive maps to be able to assess you know like Latin American art and I think they're being very intelligent they, they are decentralizing curation and that makes sense and who's Who's better to 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 curate Latin American art than Latin American artists, right? Who's better to curate uh, African art than African artists? Who's better to com uh, curate art from the um, LGBTQI community than people from that community? You know, like that's really intelligent. Um, you're empowering all, all of those communities. Eventually, if all of those communities have like galleries in inside Super Rare, so 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 I like that that that, that you ask both those questions because it all comes down to that like i i want to create a space where we can also give the collectors the, the super rare collector base which is obviously pr probably the biggest collector base of nft and crypto art in the world right now i want to give them the context of who we are of who you are of who ikaro is you know what i mean that's it mm -hmm. yeah for sure Absolutely. carlos uh, sometimes we are uh, a little bit tired of other people uh, uh, telling uh, our history, right? So it's about me, the, the decentralization concept, too. we can tell our own history, right? Exactly, exactly. That is it. That is precisely it. We need to be able, we have always been told from the North, like, what is the Latin American art that eventually goes into auction in like the big auction houses like Christie's or Sotheby's? Um, they write about us from from New York or for whatever they might be, and that's cool. That's 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 still gonna happen, you know. And 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 but it's we have another option now. There's a no, a new world, you know, being born, you know, parallel to the old uh, art world. Uh, and I think we have to to take advantage of it. And I think it's our opportunity to to showcase our art and tell our stories from our perspective. Definitely. Mm -hmm. For sure. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else? Just wanted to read out uh, Mr. Ritchie's comment, which says, uh, firstly, I want to say congrats on the Salvatore Cyber Mundi. Again, superb artwork. And also wanted to say thank you for talking about and promoting the life-changing dimension of NFT art in a real down-to-earth manner. So artists aren't shamed when thinking about money value of NFT art as well. Such great energy. Actually, just want to show love and respect and ask if we can have an exclusive hint about your plans for artworks in 2022. Boom. That's a great question, too. You guys are on fire. I love this group. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, 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 and I, I, before I joined this meeting, I was talking with a, 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 a group of designers in Seoul, in Korea, in South Korea, um, who are planning like this really interesting interactive exhibitions 
you know, with digital art. They've been doing some, probably some of you already seen their videos because they've gone viral. They create like this, you know, digital, massive digital displays all around Seoul um, in South Korea. Um, they're really immersive. They're really beautiful. Like they're really on the on the vanguard in, in that sense in how to like showcase um, digital art in public spaces. But now they're moving into like um, the museum space and the gallery space. And they're looking to have their own space in Seoul to showcase constantly uh, <clears throat> crypto art and, and, you know, digital art, but they're understanding that the future of digital art is crypto art. So, so they're really hoping um, to be able to get a project running in, in Seoul where like there's like a, a like, a, 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 you know, a, a forever <clears throat> exhibition of, of crypto art, like a uh, crypto art on display, you know, 24 seven all year round. Um, so I'm really interested to be, I'm really happy to be like collaborating with them. Um, and, and, and there's something similar with like the Salvador Cyber Mundi where I'm going like, to be, I'm going to be showcasing it in Paris, hopefully next month before I sell it. So, so I'm, I think, and, 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 and I'm, I'm just sharing like whatever, whatever is going on right now in my life, because I really don't have like, you know, like long-term plans, like, you know, NFTs has just been kind of like being in the present moment all the time and trying to figure out where things are going to be moving, which is, it can be tiring, you know, and I can understand like that tires um, artists quite a lot. But, um, <clears throat> but, what I, but what I see right now, it's kind of like, and this has been kind of like my post-COVID thesis, it's like we're going to be moving into physical spaces, but it's going to be ob obviously connected to the, sorry, connected to the digital space, to NFTs, to the metaverse. Like we're not going back. We're not going back to the physical exhibitions and to the physical space in this in the same manner that we did um, two years ago. That's not gonna happen. Like you're gonna have to add the digital element, the NFT element to whatever you're building in the real world because people wanna have that. People wanna have like we were talking, I was talking with the Korean people and they were telling me about play to live which is strange coming from Korean people now that the game, <laughs> the Squid Game came out, you know, but it, but it makes sense. It makes sense. It's play to earn. Like, you, like life becomes, you know, a, a kind of like playful scenario where you can, you know, live the life you want to live and, and, and you take stuff with you because they can exist and you can own them digitally. And I think it's going to get really, really, really interesting and we're going to see uh, really interesting projects mixing like physical spaces with the metaverse and, and it's just going to be fun. So for 2022, what I'm seeing for my art is like it's going to be in, 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 in much more physical spaces. It's going to be showcased physically mm -hmm. and people are going to be able to go and, and, and see it, you know. Um, and I like that the, the, the Koreans, they're not thinking about like the, the monitors, they're thinking about like how do I, I, it's digital art, like, it doesn't matter, like, you can project it anywhere, it can exist however you want to, you want the, the digital artwork to exist, so we don't necessarily need to confine ourselves to the way, you know, with um, historic, is historically showcased um, art, and I like how the Koreans are thinking about this, it's like, you know, fuck the monitors, let's just do super immersive, like, you walk in a room, you've been doing they were telling me like we like you because you do the the infinity rooms and we want you to 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 bring the infinity rooms into a real room and I and I said to them of course that makes sense um so I'm I'm really looking forward to that like you know 2022 um it's going to be um a year where I think a lot of like different physical spaces for um exhibiting crypto art are going to solidify in many, many different cities all around the world. And I'm hoping to play a little part in all of that, hopefully. <clears throat> Super cool, Carlos. I would love to see if you can find, uh, like if you can show what they've been doing, these uh, people in Korea, because I'd love to see the, the way that they're displaying the art, if you, if you have any like, tweets. Let me, or... let, me, let me see if I, um, yeah, let me look it up. Because they, I, what, what I told you, I saw it from kind of like the presentation, but but yeah, 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 I have the web page. Like, let me see, I can share my screen, right? Let me, uh, oh shit, did I close Discord? 
I did fucking hell. Fucking hell. Oh, I'm here. I'm here. Right? I'm here. Miko, yeah, can you hear me? You are here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Getting lost sure. in the metaverse. Getting lost in the metaverse. <laughs> Okay, let me see how I can share my screen because I, I don't usually like do this kind you of stuff. You should be like, able, or you can drop the link in the chat if you want. I, I'm or... just gonna like send the link to like just check this yep. website. Just check this yeah, website. Yeah, yeah. Like, just look Perfect. at it, right? I wish I could like like uh, okay, okay. I'll just because it's really cool. It's really fucking um pop up full screen, dude. I'm a I'm a I'm a nubia in in Discord. I don't I can't even I I I cannot even find the well the chat. It should be the which one. The residency second cohort, that one, right? Check this. Out. Yes, I just... correct. Yeah. Okay. 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 Bear with me. Bear with me. Bear with Sorry, me. Sorry, I hijacked the 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 questions, <laughs> and I just wanted uh, to see how how what, what you were saying because I'm super. This is it. This is it. Just take a quick look. I think you guys are like your, your minds are gonna be blown away. The way these people showcase digital art. If you can open the link and just take a look at their website, um. Obviously, it's not like totally new, like, you know, you've seen stuff like this, but the fact that a company that is making, you know, digital displays and that is displaying digital art in, in, in this way, um, it's, it's interested in crypto art, it's telling you a lot, I think. Ah, you have like a stream. Okay, that's cool. Exactly, you're on the, on the website. This stream has ended, close stream. What happened? <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> it's go. super cool. Um, yeah. There's a few awesome. more questions. So I'm going to read them out. Mr. Richie uh, asks, do you think traditional art world will open up more towards digital art and NFTs? Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, there's not going to be, a, um, they, they wouldn't have any other option. Like, the, the problems that, that even though if you, I mean, I, I still love, I, I, I'm still, always gonna go to the museums and appreciate physical art you know and i'm gonna be the guy that gets really close to the painting because he wants to really see the brush strokes because i get off like on that like i like to go and see kind of like the little details of the brush strokes um on a painting like i really appreciate that that's never gonna go away that's gonna be a part obviously of of the human experience but I think, you know, the kind of problems that NFT solves in terms of counterfeiting art, in terms of counterfeiting uh, of, or not being able to counterfeit provenance, that kind of thing, royalty payments, that kind of thing, that, that's, that's too much. You know, like there's no option. You have to figure out, even if you're like a traditional artist, how do you, you know, profit from, 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 from some of these <clears throat> solutions, right? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I think there's no option. It's quite similar to like cryptocurrencies and banks. Like you know, some years ago when I started reading about Bitcoin and ETH, like I remember like no, no one in like the big institution, like the big institutions, like the, like the big banks, they didn't care about Bitcoin. Like they would laugh at Bitcoiners. Like they were like, oh, these people are silly. Like they have like digital money. Like that's ah, that. Come on. That's that's nothing. That's never gonna go nowhere, you know. And nowadays, you have the banks in it. You have the banks buying Bitcoin. Um, but you don't have to go that far. We've seen it already with 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 the art world. Like when 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 we began doing this, it was like, oh, look at these funny people, like you know, exchanging and buying and selling JPEGs and GIFs for a hundred dollars. Like who's gonna like? And, and and actually, I was one of them. At the beginning, I was skeptic. I was like, okay, this is cool and this is fun, but I don't see Sotheby's or Christie's, at least not in like five or eight years, really, 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 really understanding this and taking a look at this. And obviously I was proved wrong, right? Fortunately, I was proved wrong. Like it only took, at least from when I jumped in, it only took two years. It only took two years for Christie's and Sotheby's and all the big museums to to start talking and be interested and get inside the game, you know. So it's so it's the same blueprint as as what happened with like Bitcoin and ETH. Um, like at first they don't understand you. At first they laugh at you. They don't get it. They criticize it. And then eventually, when they see that wow, this is the future of everything, they end up buying Bitcoin or 
in our case, they end up investing in crypto art and, and NFTs. So definitely, I think the Pandora box has been completely open and there's no going back. There's no going back. You know, we, 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 we might have like, you know, like bear markets and we're going to have up and downs. And if you've been enough in, in NFTs, you, you see them. You see them, like you smell them, you know, like, you know, it went down, like nobody's really buying, you know, there's no hype. But then if you think it died, you know, guess again, you're going to be surprised. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it. And I've seen it. I've seen it with cryptocurrencies. I've seen it with NFTs. They're just cyclical. They're just cyclical, but they're not going away, if that makes sense. Okay. They, they might, you know, slow down for a little bit. The markets might slow down for a little bit. The excitement might slow down for a little bit, but then eventually it picks up again. It picks up again because it's the future. And, you know, and, 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 and if like when, when we talk about art as an investment, like any investment, you're taking bets on the future. That's what investors do. That is it. You know, it's, it's, it's a gamble. You're, you're in, you, 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 um, you don't sell your ETH. Because you think that in the two months, the bull run is just going to get really crazy. And you rather sell your ETH when it gets really crazy, right? You're betting on that happening. Um, you're, you buy Bitcoin because you're pretty sure that in the next cycle, it's going to reach $1 million per Bitcoin, which I think is going to happen, right? So when I buy Bitcoin, I'm betting that Bitcoin in five years is going to be $1 million per Bitcoin. That's what I believe. So I'm, 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 I'm taking bets on the future. And it's the same thing when people buy our NFTs. They're betting on our artistic, our, our artistic careers to keep growing. But they're also betting on the whole NFT and crypto, crypto art ecosystem uh, to keep growing. You know, they're betting on the future of art. That's where they, they're putting money on it. And some of them, you know, they, they come from investing early in cryptocurrency. So they understand the upside of being early to invest in the future. And I think that's what we are all doing here by being in this cohort. Like we, we know that the code that I, it might not, it might not take over the, the world, but NFTs in, in, in the rest of the 21st century, they're going to play an important part in every cultural aspect of our lives in the 21st century. So, so we are betting on that happening and that's why we're here. So I don't think this is going to end no time soon. Next year with the bear market, it might go down, right? Because, you know, everybody's selling their cryptocurrencies and whatnot. And it, it, it might die, die down a little bit. But I actually come to believe that next year is going to be really interesting with NFTs because a lot of our collectors, they're like big investors and traders in the cryptocurrency world. And uh, as this bull run gets to the end, they're going to be taking profits. They're going to be taking gains and they're going to be waiting for the markets to plummet, to go down so they can buy again Bitcoin and ETH really, really, really cheaply. So that means that they're going to have more ETH to buy NFTs. And the thing is like, usually um, cryptocurrencies work in a, like a four year cycle. So that means like the only year that cryptocurrencies are like negative it's like next year probably, um, and they, like it's one year out of like the four, the, the four year cycle that they go down, and then like the other three years they're just going up. Even if it's not like now in the middle of the bull run, they're just going up always, always. But next year might be the only uh, only year. It's the only year when it goes down. So that um, what I'm thinking is like a lot of collectors are gonna protect, you know, and they're gonna keep their investments in the cryptocurrency world, in the crypto world, by buying more NFTs. So I'm expecting um, NFTs to be also very popular in 2022. I don't see it, you know, not happening. Um, so so between those, those things and like everybody, like culture is picking up on crypto art and like there's no way they, they won't keep like pushing the, the, the theme. I don't see um, NFTs and crypto art dying. I don't see it. I, I see kind of like, you know, the markets going up and down. And that's why I, I always tell like up and coming NFT artists, learn how to save, learn how to invest, you know, learn how to trade a little bit even like you don't have to be like a day trader because you're going to lose money. 
But if you know that you're getting it now, but the bull run in it's gonna it's gonna get really crazy in in, in December and in January, like be ready to take profits, be ready to take gains, and and uh, you don't have maybe to 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 exchange it for Brazilian reals, or you don't have to change it for Mexican pesos. You can stabilize your if you can put it into a stable coin and then just ride the wave down because the markets are gonna crash the cryptocurrencies markets are gonna crash so you don't want to see the the money that you've made in if just go down so that means you have to be prepared at least by the end of december um, january next year to be able to move your if from if to stable coin so you can save your gains right and that's that's what what the the the, the traders are gonna do also and that means that when it comes down they're gonna have like stable coin like us dollar to buy more ETH so they can buy more more nfts that's what's gonna happen i'm pretty sure of it <laughs> so it's gonna be fun it's gonna be a wild ride uh but but i don't see 2022 not being a good year for nfts uh on the contrary i think nft uh, 2022 is gonna be like a great year for nfts and I hope also that it becomes it becomes the year where like more galleries open up, you know, see on like physical ones. Um, yeah, so I'm 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 betting on, on it being like a really 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 good year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is, uh, j just sorry. Uh, about about those things you said, like it's it's crazy to see how the the mainstream media here in brazil didn't know about about <laughs> about nfts and crypto and i'm seeing like for two months ago some people talking about this in in traditional art spaces and they literally don't know nothing about what we are doing <laughs> like they are trying to to figure out and but they are not really in the twitter and seeing everything what is happening and i don't know like as you said next year will be great and i feel this too because yeah like more and more people are trying to know and trying to get in and this make anything spread and getting bigger mm -hmm, mm -hmm, exactly i believe so you know that they, they, like you're mentioning like they're now really kind of like getting into it while we've been already some time inside of it and and we kind of like get more of like the intricacies of, of, of the whole thing and the whole space. Um, but, and, and, and we're going to be like the, 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 the ones to welcome like these people. Like I, that's what I love about, you know, the NFT community. Like I, I, when I got in, it was really welcoming and I've just tried to, to keep that going and, and be warm and welcoming to other people. It doesn't even, it doesn't even matter if like one year ago you said NFTs were trash. Because it's happened. You're, you're, you're seeing artists that, that one year ago were trashing NFTs and now today they're minting their first NFT. That's happening, okay? That's real. So I, I just expect that to grow, 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 and grow. Like more people are just going to say, fuck it, I'm, I'm, I'll have to figure out what is this all about. Um, and I'm hoping that we are, you know, the same kind of community that we are open and we're lobbying and we're caring and we don't care if you said this or that, it doesn't matter. You didn't have the information, you know? Um, and, and next year, if it's gonna move to, um, to proof of stake, so it's gonna be super ecological. So it also like we, we're gonna have to be able to, to, be, to open up dialogues with the people who, who brought up those issues, which, which are real issues. And there's nothing oh, wrong with that. You know what I mean? Like there's nothing wrong with that. But we're going to yeah. have the resources next year to sit down and tell them, you know what? Remember, Ethereum is completely ecological now. Right? So, so we're going to have to be kind of like the mature ones. We are the mature ones. We are the ones who saw this early. So we have to be able to not be resentful. Like, it doesn't matter if you talk bad about, if you said something bad about me or my art or NFTs or the community. Like, dude, you want to sit down and you want to talk? Let's talk. Let's talk. You're interested now. That's cool. That's all. We, we knew that eventually a lot of you are we're gonna come around and, 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 and try to come into like the NFT space. 
So we, we need to be really mature and we need to keep our loving and caring attitude, even with the, the people who used to hate us before. Mm -hmm. For sure, totally right. Um, thank you, I thank you want... so much for answering. For, for, sure, for sure. I just want to read out another question uh, from Vitali before we are up to the hour, which says, you've been in the NFT space for some time before it got a lot of attention this year. How has your experience and perception of it changed since then from an artist's perspective? Oh my God, yeah. I... Oof. It's been really, it's been like nothing else in my life. And I've had like a couple of really surreal and, and super interesting experiences in my life. Like I'm not that young, I'm, I'm 37. So, so I've seen quite the, you know, a, a lot of things already in my life. I have kids, I have children. I've seen them be born, you know, and that's really like surreal to see, you know, a, a life come come out like that's really crazy but but in but to see in in only a year because i spent like a year before like things got really crazy and it was just like my hobby like i was just doing nfts um you know whenever i had the chance and and whatnot um uh, it wasn't you know i was i was living off them um by then already like i was but but i had saved money i had saved i had uh some savings in bitcoin actually i want to say that like full disclosure like I jumped into like being a full-time crypto artist like um, five months after I discovered NFTs. Um, but I had some savings that were in Bitcoin already. So I, I understood crypto and I understood how it went up, right? And, and, and it's deflationary and that I could put my savings in there and they would perform better than if I put them in Mexican pesos or in, in US dollars. Um, I, I, I understood that. I understood that. So I was ready to kind of like make the jump. I also didn't have much more options because I was being laid off of my old job because of COVID. Um, but, but yeah, but it was fun. It was just like small and it was like a little bit of money here and there, not much. So I was still kind of like the struggling artist, but I was like the struggling NFT artist, right? Um, and then all of a all of a sudden it just blew up with the with the people sale at Christie's. Um, yeah, and it became like a, a monster, like a different thing. But but I've I've learned to to embrace the monster, if that makes sense. I, maybe at the beginning I was scared of the monster, like it was getting too big for me to handle. Like wow, what is this? Why so ha why so quickly? Um, and nowadays it's like it, it was gonna happen. And that's why I knew I, I needed to like put my, all my attention and become a full-time um, crypto artist because I knew that eventually, even though my timing was not right because I believe like it was gonna take Christie's like five years to jump into the game, I knew that was gonna happen. I had a feeling. It wasn't like, you know, consciously, it was like in my heart, like in my soul, like I knew there was something was gonna happen with this. Uh, and that's the bet, and that's why I took the bet. That's why I took the leap, and I jumped in, right? Because I could see that. But but I never in a million years would I've expected it to be as big as it's become. And I've had to learn how to love the monster, if that makes sense. That's my answer. <laughs> that's, I've had to love the monster because it's just become really big, and I don't see it becoming smaller and becoming kind of like the small niche community that I discovered two years ago. No, 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 no. This is taking all over the world. Um, so yeah, it's it's a whole different animal right now. Um, you have like the big players that came in, like it's not like a, 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 hypo a, a hypothesis, like Christie's or Sotheby's are gonna be joining us. No, 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 it happened, right? So so I don't know. It's kind of like I was in, in the right place at the right time and then lightning just struck. And I was there where the lightning hit the ground. And I was lucky enough to, to see that happening. But I, I wasn't prepared. And actually, I'm, I'm, I struggle a little bit, like, you know, mentally and psychologically with the fact that, you know, I, it's, it's bigger and there's a lot of people and it's too much. And, 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 and now I get a lot of messages. Like, I didn't get DMs two years ago. Like, nobody cared about me. Nobody knew me. You know, and then all of a sudden, and I, and I wasn't prepared for it. Like, 
I've had to learn how to deal with the attention, um, with 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 the good and the bad, you know, with the good and the bad, because um, you have the bad, you have people criticizing your art because you're putting your art out there and it's getting attention and people are recognize, recognizing it and people are are paying money for it and 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 that creates some resentment in 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 in, in artists, you know, and it's like why somebody paid for that? I don't like it. That's ugly. Whatever. You know, but then you also have to deal with like the good consequences. Um, and, and that's also like a learning process. How do I deal with this? Um, and, 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 and it's been it's been a challenge, to be honest. It's been a challenge. I've had to learn how to like take longer breaks. I've had to learn how to like take better care of myself, of my mental health. Um, I've had to learn how to meditate. I just got myself uh, a, a gym membership. So I'm going back. I used to go. I, I, I like going to the to the gym, so I used to do that a lot before COVID. But obviously, I, I wasn't able to do it during COVID. So now that the gyms have been opening back again here in Mexico City, I realized that I needed to pay more, much more attention to my physical health, to my mental health. So even though it's been great to see kind of like the explosion and how big this thing has gotten, um, I think it has also pushed a lot of artists. To, to complicated mental spaces. Uh, but the thing is, like, what you need to do in that case is just figure out how to, like, move forward, you know? And, and in my case, that's been meditating, um, taking care of my health, you know, spending more time with my family, never forgetting about them, that kind of thing. So, so, so it's been good, but it's been bad. I like to say, I don't know if you guys know Charles Dickens, the British writer. He has a, a great book called um, A Tale of Two Cities. And I think that's probably the best opening in any book in the history of literature. I love that opening line to like A Tale of Two Cities. He says, it was the worst of times and it was the best of times. And I think for a lot of people in the NFT space, it's been like that. Like even, even though a lot of us have become like popular and well-known artists, that still happened during lockdowns and COVID. And in my case, I have little kids that I have to take care of and that I have to, you know, take to school. Well, that I have to take to school now, but I, that I, I, I had to homeschool them for almost two years. So that means that I was like building my NFT career at the same time that I had to figure out how to homeschool my kids and how to deal with having my kids 24-7 at, at, at the house, right? Um, so it's been the worst of times and it was, and it's been the best of times. It's been really interesting. I think, I think you're going to see like books about crypto art and novels. I think people are going to write novels about crypto art in a couple of years. I think, and, and, and that's the proof that this is a real, um, a cultural movement. You know, it's, it's been everything. It's been complicated. It's, it's been good, but it's been bad also, you know, it has its bad parts. But that's how you know you have a real movement in your hands. It's not like, you know, peaches and cream all the time. It's a real fucking movement with good things and with bad things. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have time for another question. Yes, yeah, yeah, I do. I do. Let's go. Awesome. Okay. So, uh, Paparazzi by Deva says Hi, Carlos. Let me start off by saying that you're an incredible representative of the Latin American community in this space. I just have a quick question if you have the time. Historically, art collecting has been mostly reserved to the aristocracy, and we're now witnessing a shift where global artists are now becoming collectors. What role do you think the crypto art movement is playing in democratization of art and the creation of generational wealth? In mm -hmm. traditional economy challenges, changing. That's a really good question. I think I got it. Um... Yeah, I, 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 I think you're going to see much more artists collecting artworks um, with real monetary value than ever before in the, in the history of art. Um, just because I think this is kind of like one of the biggest wealth transfers um, in, in the history of art. Like, like you're seeing a lot of artists, you know, maybe not making like the millions that, that Xcopy makes or or a lot of money, or some of those um, artists make. Uh, but you're like, I, I love to go into like cryptoart.io and see how many artists in, in the middle of the pandemic, and like in the did like more than 
$10,000 in selling art. And it's crazy to see that it's already like, like I think it's like 500, or I might be mistaken, but it might be more. But it's crazy to see that something that came out of nothing, right? Like nobody was expecting this, just like nobody was expecting COVID-19. Um, um, and, and even though, you know, COVID-19 was like the, 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 the bad part of all of this, like the good thing was like NFTs came because of it probably, right? Because we were all stuck in our houses. So, so you never have like, there's something, there's always like a silver lining in, in every like bad situation in your life or in, in, or in the world. <clears throat> and one of the things that I noticed is that, is that like you get, that there's a lot of money going into creatives and, and into artists, right? Without middlemen. So it's, it's, more, it's much more capital that at the end uh, gets to the artist, hopefully. That's the idea. So what I what I think is like I, I never thought like that I would be beating on art that I would be buying art you know that I, I never thought of, I like two years ago two years ago I was struggling to to pay the fucking rent okay I was honestly struggling to pay the fucking rent here in Mexico City which is not like the most expensive city in the world you know and I was struggling to pay the rent that's my story you know. And nowadays, I can bid on artworks. Um, I can buy them. I can support other artists. And 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 I and I am I'm, I'm obviously kind of like riding the the wave now of the end of the bull run to try to maximize the profits from the ETH that I've been getting for the past two years from selling my art. Um, but I plan to take those gains so that I can buy much more ETH when it all goes down, so that I have more ETH to invest in other artists. So I just need the chance as an artist that understands the crypto economy, I just need the chance to ride this bull run and take the profit and, and take the gains and change my, my economical status, so to speak, so that I can then feel like I'm in the position to help and, and collect much more artists, okay? Um, and, and I think that's just gonna keep growing as the, as the crypto cycles keep coming and going, I think you're going to see much more artists with money and resources to collect and help other artists. And I, I, I don't think we've ever seen something like, like that, at least at that scale, ever, ever, ever in the history of art. That never happened. Never, 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 never. I'm pretty sure. Like, it was always like a couple of them. It was Picasso, Dali, blah, blah, blah. You needed to be in France. You needed to be here. Then, you know, with modernism, a lot of that moved to New York. You needed to be with in, in New York with the modernists and the abstract expressionists. They were obviously like a really small group. Even, and, 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 and even though a lot of them ne never made money during their lifetime, you know, they, they, their, their prices have gone up, but, it's, but they've never seen any money because they're dead, right? They never made money in their lifetime. <clears throat> and what you're seeing right now is like living artists making real money, you know, real amounts of money. So that's that's obviously going to have an effect on on how the 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 ecosystem keeps growing. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Thank you yeah. so much, Carlos. My pleasure. Love that. I think this this has been some of the best questions I've ever been asked before. <laughs> honestly, honestly, you have a great group. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah they are great uh yeah thank you thanks a lot like honestly it was great um uh, to hear to hear about you um so it was really 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 inspiring and you said so many so many interesting things so really appreciate your time thank you i'll be willing to come back and talk anytime you tell me yay that would be amazing <laughs> sure. take care love you all love you all keep creating keep keep you know keep pushing keep believing in yourself and what you have to say to the world thank you carlos thank have a good you day. thank you so much thanks carlos. everyone thank you carlos thank obrigado you. carlos obrigado obrigado meu placer valeu demais thank you so much thank you bye bye bye, -bye.